Uh, I'd like to call our City Council Committee the whole meeting for December 6, 2017 to order. At this time for our moment of silence, you know, it's always, uh, I want us all to remember, uh, not remember, but definitely remember the fragility of life. Um, she's doing fine, but Mayor Acri in Moline was in a severe car accident, and I think she's recovering. It looks like she's moved out of intensive care. Um, but all of us go on our way, and uh, and we all have busy schedules, but realizing, and, it, and we're at a time of year where there's a lot of busy schedules with holidays and whatever coming up, but realize the importance of living every moment and appreciating our family and the wonderful community that we live in. With that, let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. Alderman Dunn, would you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Um, Tiffany, would you please call the roll? Ambrose? Here. Matson? Here. Dickman? Here. Grip? Here. Gordon? Here. Cool? Rawson? McGinnis? Here. Tompkins? Here. Dunn? Here. Nine present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And just want to note uh, Alderman Rawson uh, just had a, uh, is sick and she had she went home. so. Uh, let's, again, continue our thoughts and prayers with her as well. I think it was just probably the time of year with a lot of flu and sickness going around. So hopefully she feels a lot better um, as well. Again, I want to wish you all a good evening. And as we begin this meeting of our city council, I would like to welcome all of those in attendance and those who are viewing the meeting on television or on the Internet. Uh, we respectfully welcome your comments and opinions. Please keep in mind that as you talk to the council, you are also sharing your thoughts with fellow Davenporters and with viewers throughout the region by way of our TV broadcast. We really are happy that you are participating in your city government and ask that your participation reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport an even greater place for all of our citizens. For the children, adults, seniors, and families in our community, those in attendance and those watching at home, I thank you for joining us. Uh, at this time, we ask that you turn off or silence your cell phones and other electronic handheld devices as they can not only interfere with the audio system, but also be disruptive for us here in the chambers. Uh, tonight is our Committee of the Whole. If you wish to address the Council on a specific item that appears on a committee agenda, you are encouraged to do so during that standing committee. You will also have an opportunity to address the City Council under public with business portion of the meeting, which will occur towards the end. When addressing the Council, I ask that you step to the podium, wait to be recognized by, 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 by myself or the committee chair, and speak to the council as a body and not to any single member. We ask that you limit your remarks to no more than five minutes, and I ask that everyone, and I know you all will, observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, good taste, and the holiday spirit. Um, with that, again, I thank you. And uh, are there any, first of all, let me get on with that, my pen. Um, is there a city administrator update this evening? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move into, and again, I wanted to clarify for those in attendance, which we have been attending to do, to, tonight is the Committee of the Whole. We're going to have some public hearings, which opens up discussion for the public to know, and then many of these items and other items will be on our agenda. People have, we will ask any input on any of these agenda items throughout the whole meeting. This is where we bring up everything that we're going to be discussing and voting on next week. So I want to give everyone an opportunity to understand the process that we are undertaking. Our first public hearing, the smart public hearing area this tonight is uh, community development, and Alderman Grip will lead that discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. We have two public hearings in community development. I open the public hearing for the ordinance for case number ROW 17-06, being the request of the City of Davenport for the right-of-way vacation abandonment of 10,800 square feet, more or less, of public right-of-way south of the west terminus of Dugan Court and north of the west terminus of the right-of-way south of Dugan Court. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this public hearing? You can step forward to the lectern, state your name, and your address, please. Evening. My name is Gay Jasper, and this is my husband, Larry. Excuse me, I've got a cold too. <laughs> anyway.
anyhow, we live at the 2437 Dugan Court address with the property immediately to the west of us. We've maintained it um, throughout the time we've stayed there. City does come up and mow it, but we go over there and we kind of re-mow and edge and um, pick up any debris from the fair, people that come to the fair, um, any trash that's been in there. It's kind of like an extended part of our yard, although the, uh, the public, they do use it as a, you know, cut through and everything. So we pick up beer bottles and trash and we try and keep it nice and clean. So anyhow, my father had had the house previously. <clears throat> Excuse me. He had had the house previously and we'd help him try and keep it cleaned up. But we're, we're very interested in having that property and making it look really nice and fencing it in and plants and flowers. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? This public hearing has been closed. I open the public hearing on the proposed conveyance of the following property, the southernmost four acres of parcel W3307-02A, Interstate Industrial Park, 6th edition, lot 2, to petitioner ARCP, JDDPT1A01IA01 LLC. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close this public hearing. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? This public hearing has been closed. Uh, Mayor, back to you. Thank you, Alderman Grip. Our second area tonight is a public works, public uh, public hearing. Uh, Alderman Ambrose will lead that discussion. Thank you, Honor. First off, I'd like to ask Vice Chairman Dunn to read this. Unfortunately, I forgot my glasses. And then do uh, the public works. Thanks. Sure. I open this hearing up, uh, public hearing on the plan specification form a contract on the estimated cost for the Federal Street Sewer Improvement Project, CIP 3001, estimated at $728,000 in bonds abated by the sewer fund. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to address? Please step forward and take your I just moved in that neighborhood. It's called Little Claire Heights now, I do believe. And I'm glad to see what they're doing down there. Uh, they've spent a sizable amount of money on the uh, retaining wall. Looks nice, really nice. Uh, I'm glad to see them uh, moving into the inner city and renovating things and making things beautiful and Davenport again. I hate to see, I really hate to see that the old St. Luke's Hospital was set. That was a travesty. But anyway, this money is some thousand dollars is this for storm sanitary? Uh, because I'm, I, I've been in construction over 45 years. That's a lot of money for uh, some sewer work. I don't know if somebody could enlighten me. That's almost that's three quarters of a million dollars. Anybody in charge of that? Or just nobody answers questions here, right? I just I just get up and say my piece. That's how it works. Actually, not in this part. Later on, we'll be able to do that in the actual council. It'll be it'll come up again in the council meeting. Okay, because I have lots of questions. I like them answered. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close public hearing. Could move and second. All in favor? Aye. This passes from Mayor Pat Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Um, tonight, there are no presentations for tonight's meeting, and uh, uh, any petitions or communications from the council or mayor. So I see Alderman McGinnis, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, next third ward meeting is Thursday, at December 14th at 6.30, second floor of the Freight House. Our special guest will be um, a member of the Davenport Police Department, so come with your questions. Um, there is elevator accessibility through the old Food Hub location uh, for those who will need it. Um, and then a, a reminder of the Davenport Police Association's toy drive on behalf of Family Resources. 
The drop-off for toys and monetary donations is Saturday and Sunday, December 9th and 10th, near Firestone at the North Park Mall. And toys and donations may also be dropped off during business hours at the Davenport Police Department. So if you can help out and be generous this season, please do so. And one more reminder. I checked online tonight with Wreaths Across America, and uh, the City Cemetery, which are, is our historic Third Ward Cemetery, is still short on wreaths for veterans who are buried there. Uh, we're right now, the cemetery is at 70% to goal, so that if you, so if you can donate a wreath uh, for our, our, our veterans buried there, you can visit uh, wreathsacrossamerica.org and search on City Cemetery and make your donation through them. So please think about doing that this season. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McGinnis. Uh, Alderman Dickman. Thank you, Your Honor. I will be having a ward meeting this coming Tuesday, December 12th at Truman Elementary, 6 p.m., and we will be having as our guests our Honor, uh, Mayor Frank Klipsch, to talk about the riverfront. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Dickman. Alderman Grip. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just wanted to give kudos to the Parks Department and the Friends of Vanderveer. Uh, Vanderveer Park is lit up in a way it hasn't been lit up uh, as long as I can remember. It is really fantastic with the nice weather we've had. Um, there's just been hundreds of people walking up and down uh, the alley there uh, between, <coughs> between the uh, botanical garden and uh, the fountain. And I'm waiting for that first snowfall to go visit it. But it's a great, great attraction in the winter and uh, really well done. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Grip. Uh, just one comment again as a reminder. Uh, this is the Committee of the Whole this week. Next week will be our City Council meeting where we vote on the items that we are discussing this evening. And that will be the last Council meeting and last cycle of 2017. And then we'll restart again the first of the year. So just so you're aware, um, we will see some of you next week and then have a great holiday. So just as a reminder. Uh, now we have some action items for discussion. The first area to be discussed is community development and Alderman Grip will lead that discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. We have four items on uh, discussion for this evening's community development. I open this evening's community development evening uh, with item number one, a third consideration ordinance for case number REZ 17-09, request of Michael R. Leap Sr. for the proposed rezoning of 13.465 acres, more or less, of property located at southeast corner of Eastern Avenue and East 53rd Street from C1 Neighborhood Commercial District to C2 general commercial district is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this item anyone from the council seeing no one this item will move on item number two has actually been withdrawn so we will not discuss that i'll ask the clerk to make a note uh, to to scratch item number two from the agenda it has been withdrawn from the petitioner that moves us to item number three, which is a first consideration ordinance for case number ROW 17-06, being the request of the City of Davenport for the right-of-way vacation abandonment of 10,800 square feet, more or less, of public right-of-way south of the west terminus of Dugan Court and north of the west terminus of the right-of-way south of Dugan Court. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to discuss this matter? Is there anyone from Council? Alderwoman Dickman. Uh, I was just curious, one of the things that the resident mentioned was putting a fence around it, and I know yesterday it was mentioned that it was the abandonment but not the conveyance. Will they still be able to put a fence around it? Uh, whoever gets it in the end through the conveyance part, if they become the owner, then they would be able to probably join it to their lot and fence it. Okay, so that is still potentially happening? Right, so okay. the first phase is just to vacate the right-of-way so it's no longer public right-of-way. Gotcha. And then there'll be another phase where it's uh, conveyed okay. to someone. Thank you for clearing that up. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, the Dugan neighborhood is a little challenging, and the Jaspers have really have done a great job over the years to police that area and you know, address some of the challenges in that neighborhood. And I, I would hope, you know, we can work with them down the road and they have the opportunity. So I know the fairgrounds has a fence up in that area, but they've done a great job. You know, it's been in the family. So, 
you know, I hope we can focus on the Jasper family as this moves forward. Seeing no other comments, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution authorizing the conveyance of portions of vacated Rogalski Drive, Pleasant Street, Ripley Street, and three alleyways located in Block 1 and 2 of Noel's second edition to St. Ambrose University. St. Ambrose University is the petitioner. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to discuss this item? Step to the lectern, state your name and address, please. Ed McWilliams, uh, First Ward, um, I just wanted to thank the city for uh, working with uh, St. Ambrose on this. It uh, gives St. Ambrose a big opportunity to uh, grow and expand in the community. Thank you. Is there anyone from council? Um, I will go to uh, Corporate Council Tom Warner uh, for a comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Bruce Berger can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's been in discussions with St. Ambrose and they would like it to be amended back uh, so that they're actually taking all of the streets and alleys as it was originally proposed. I will make that motion. There's a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, the amendment passes. So that, that was going to be my question to uh, the CPED team is that we've discussed with St. Ambrose and we've come to agreeable terms uh, for, for everybody. This was on our agenda several weeks ago. St. Ambrose uh, could not come to an agreement with us, so they asked us to uh, table, table the resolution for a few weeks until we could come to an agreement. Uh, now that we have, um, it is back and we uh, will be voting on it uh, this week. So seeing no other comments, this item will move on as well, and I would entertain emotions to put items 1, 3, and 4 on the consent agenda and note that item 2 has been withdrawn. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? And, Mayor, that concludes uh, community planning this Thank evening. You, Thank you, Alderman Drip. Our second area to be discussed this evening is public safety, and Alderman Matson will lead that discussion, and Alderman Dickman will set the agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll open the discussion items for public safety. Uh, the first one is a resolution closing various streets, lanes, public grounds on listed dates. We have one, River Bandits, River Bandits 5K, April 21st, 20, April already, all right. Uh, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., closure location begins on 2nd Street to Centennial Bridge, over to the Government Bridge, and returns to Modern Wormwood Park via the bike path. Anyone from the public have a concern about the street closure? Council. Very good. Item two is a motion approving beer and liquor license applications. New licenses. I'll, I'll read each one and then ask for discussion. Happy Joe's Pizza, dynamic restaurant acquisition, 817 South Farragut Street, license type B. Uh, El Fugan, 1717 West 3rd Street, license type C. Quad Cities Convention and Visitor Bureau, uh, 136 East 3rd Street, Suite B, location transfer, license type B, uh, River Center, Adler Theater, Venue Works, 136 East 3rd Street, premise update to exclude suite occupied by the convention, Quad Cities Convention and Visitors Bureau, license type C. So they're going to have a lot of action going on there. Happy Joe's Pizza, uh, 1616 West Locust Street, outdoor area, license type C, uh, Cardio Sports Bar, and Grill, 3811 North Harrison Street, uh, Suite A, Outdoor Area License Type C, RNC, Brazilian Steakhouse, um, 320 West Kimberly Road, Suite 53, Outdoor Area License Type C, and Happy Joe's Pizza, 201 West 50th Street, License Type Beer and Wine. Does anybody from the public have any concerns with any of those new licenses? Sir, I'll uh, ask you to stay quiet and unless you thank you. Unless you have a concern, you can come address it at the podium. Thank you. Well, it does, but that's enough. Council? Okay, very good. And I'll just make one item of note. Uh, the Brazilian Steakhouse Mall, uh, that's a great thing. So um, <laughs> just a little plug. Annual licenses, we have them on your agenda. We don't read all of them. Does anybody from the public have a concern with any of those annual license renewals? 
Very good. Council? Very good. I'll uh, ask Alderwoman Dickman to please recommend an agenda. I move that both items be placed on the consent agenda. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. All right. They're all on consent. Thank you, Mayor. Back to you. Thank you, Alderman Metzen and Alderman Dickman. Our third area to be discussed is public works, and Alderman Ambrose uh, and Alderman Dunn lead those discussions, and Alderman Dunn will lead this discussion this evening. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the Public Works Committee meeting for tonight. We have several items on the agenda. Item number one is a resolution approving the proposed resolution of necessity for the FY17 alley resurfacing program. Two positions were received to resurface the alleys between LeClaire and Farnham and Garfield in Columbia and between Schricker and Glassbell from Pine to Belmont. Is there anyone from the public? Council? Very good. That item will move forward. Item number two is a resolution accepting the storm sewer and pavement associated with the 53rd Street and Spring Street site improvements. Anyone from the public? Council? Seeing none, let's move on. Item number three is a resolution approving the plans, specifications, form of contract, and the estimated cost for the Federal Street Sewer Improvement Project, CIP 3001, estimated at $728,000 in bonds abated by the storm sewer funds. Anyone from the public? Please step forward and state your name and board. I live in that neighborhood. And uh, I moved into a house slash <laughs> former barbershop, which was raided by the Davenport Police Department. Uh, the barbershop proprietors there were selling crack and weed out of the basement. That's where I live now. I live in a barbershop. But I like it there. It's small. It's comfortable. It's got one of those red pole lights that light up. But nevertheless, with the amount of money they're spending there for that money, right in front of my house is dark. I had my door kicked in and I was robbed because it's dark. Uh, I could take means to protect myself, but I wouldn't want to hurt somebody needlessly for, over money. But uh, I talked to, uh, I forget the gentleman I talked to, it's dark. You know, they only come out at night, right? <laughs> you know, uh, and all I'm asking is maybe somebody take a look at that and throw a light in uh, because uh, I just turned 65. I'd like to see 66. Excuse me, are these, I, I, uh, you have questions? Go ahead, Alderman. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, uh, there's concerns there, but we're talking about a certain item here on the agenda. Oh, yeah, but you're talking about spending 700 and some thousand dollars for uh, separations and sewer, and I understand sewer work and paving and all that because I did it for 10 years. I understand the importance of that separating and, and deteriorating sewers. But public safety, I think, should come uh, first and foremost over fixing some raggedy-looking sewer. Uh, you know, I got right, so it's on record. I got a police report, and I was robbed, door kicked in by some thugs. You know, if it happens again, I'm going to war. And when I say war, I'm going to protect myself. And as a citizen of these United States, I have that right. Point of order. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Council? Seeing none, this item will move. This item will move forward. Item number four is a resolution approving the change order number two to Valley Construction Company in the amount of $310,118.75 for the West 76th Street Extension Project. This project was funded through multiple grant sources with the city's portion being, is that correct? $2,889.87. Anyone from the public? Council. Alderman Matson. Thank you, Mr. Ch uh, Chair. I just want to say again, um, we talked about this a long time ago, and there were some pretty good meetings at Wood School, and I appreciate the staff and everybody working together um, and getting this moving, and, and I know Alderman Thompson has, has pushed it and done a great job uh, with this, too, and the staff. I mean, that's a pretty cool number there, so thank you. Great stuff. Thanks. Seeing no one else, this item will move on. Item number five is a resolution turning over the maintenance responsibilities of the decorative street lights surrounding the downtown YMCA to the city of Davenport and authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement. Anyone from the city? Council? 
seeing none, this item will move on. Item number six is a resolution approving a contract amendment to the Duck Creek South Interceptor Rehabilitation Project with S&K Construction LLC in the amount of $620,000. Anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move forward. <coughs> item number seven is a resolution approving the contract for the traffic signals at the Walmart on Elmore Avenue project for Tri-City Electric Contract Company of <coughs> Iowa from Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $122,667.28. Anyone from the public wishing to speak to this item? State, come forward and state your name and ward. Richard Drucker, Fourth Ward. And uh, Elmore Avenue and roundabouts. I was here before talking about roundabouts. They're a lot more economical than stop and go lights that are going to cost you $10,000 a year, plus what your cost to put them in. You put a roundabout, it will cost you more than 10000 It will cost you probably more than this. But you'll never pay $10,000 again. Roundabouts have been proven to be a very safe intersection. Maybe some of us are too old, too much in driving to the red light and stopping with our engine running, polluting the city. And I just can't understand why you're so against roundabouts and you like to give money away. Remember, us taxpayers are not your mint. You know, we pay taxes, but I don't want to feel like I'm your personal mint. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Council? Seeing none, this. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman Gordon. Uh, thank you, Alderman Dunn. I, <clears throat> I uh, appreciate the comments of, of the resident here. I, I also, uh, in the right conditions and circumstances I'm a fan of roundabouts I, I do believe this is the um, Elmore and then the the Walmart um, parking lot exit on to Elmore it's at the discount tire location and the developer will reimburse the city for the cost of the oh that's you okay the signals. but that but I think from a traffic perspective I think coming out of a parking lot I'm guessing that's not an ideal use of a, of a roundabout I won't pretend to be the traffic engineer okay well, at least we're getting reimbursed for the light. But uh, I, I, for one, uh, my second to last meeting would like to say I like roundabouts. And then in a couple of weeks, it's not going to matter at all what I think. But uh, I just wanted to be on record. You're not talking about a parking lot. There's grass area there, boulevards on both sides. So you're not talking about tearing up a parking lot. And, you know, I'm glad to see Walmart there. But why are we supporting them? We give money away. Uh, you're, pay, you're say they're paying for the light, but they're not going to pay that $10,000 a year to maintain it. When the lights go out, they're not going to pay to replace them. That's on us, the taxpayers. I'm upset, as you can see with my voice and that. I just can't see throwing money down the sewer. Sorry, on the sewer, but. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else from the council? Seeing none. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Griff. Uh, thank you, Alderman Dunn. I just want to uh, reiterate what Alderman Gordon say, said, which is uh, I am generally in support of roundabouts as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental shift from the way that we've designed our city uh, thus far. Um, while this gentleman is in support, um, not everyone is. And so uh, we do have a roundabout going in on Jersey Ridge um, right near there. And I think what you'll see is when people uh, start to use roundabouts and see that they don't have to stop, that they are safer, um, that we will be able to implement more roundabouts in, in the city. But we have to do it strategically um, and with a plan where it makes sense and um, so that we, we can show people th the benefits of, of roundabouts. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Grip. Seeing no one else, this item will move on. Item number eight is, most, is a motion authorizing the mayor to sign the sanitary sewer easement agreement in conjunction with the Sterilite development. Anyone from the public wishing to address this issue? Council.
seeing none this item will move on item number nine is a motion approving the plan specification and estimate of the cost of the Jundy Park culvert replacement project anyone from the public wishing to address this issue council seeing none this item will move on item number 10 is a motion approving the plan specification and estimated cost of the Duck Creek Duck Creek South new manhole project anyone from the public wishing to address us council seeing none this item will move on item number 11 is a motion accepting work associated with the Utica Ridge sidewalk project on the west side of Utica Ridge from 55th Street north to Kathleen Way anyone from the public wishing to address us council seeing none this item will move on item number 12 is a motion accepting agreements necessary for the transload facility sidetrack expansion project and allow the mayor to execute said agreements anyone from the public wishing to address this council seeing none this item will move on alderman ambrose would you please set the agenda for us please fantastic agenda all items to the consent agenda we have a motion and a second all in favor Aye. all opposed this mr. chair I do have a question for public works sure. before we wrap it up sure. we have uh, fall is wrapping up now and there's just an uh, enormous amount of leaves people have been blowing out in the streets and I get calls almost daily about it other rental property it does nothing with the leaves you know I would hope public works can come up with something before the snow f falls and the plow jockeys get out there and start pushing the leaves in the neighborhoods okay thanks thank you Alderman Ambrose anybody else want to make any comments before we close seeing none back to you mayor Thank you, Alderman Dunn and Alderman Ambrose. Um, that closes that section. And our last area to be discussed is finance. Alderman Tompkins, would you please lead that discussion? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I open finance. We have five items for discussion tonight. Number one is a resolution adopting the City of Davenport's 2018 State Legislative Program. I wanted to thank uh, Mallory Merritt for putting this together. She's identified six uh, priorities for the City Council and City staff to work on. I um, was so wondering if there's anybody from the public who'd like to uh, comment on this item. Anyone from Council? Mayor Klipsch? Oh, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Alderman Something Gordon. If you'd like, but uh, it was his turn. I'm sure the Mayor would be <laughs> more than willing to make some comments. Whoever would like to comment. <laughs> Thank you, Alderwoman Tompkins. I just wanted to say I think this looked good, and I'm 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 pleased to see staff sort of um, I'm formalizing an actual agenda, uh, you know, well in advance of session um, uh, to sort of get out ahead of some of these issues. And just uh, you know, maybe something to, for for this council to think about moving forward is I know that mental health is not in specifically in our wheelhouse of services we deliver. Um, it is a function of state uh, and county uh, government, but um, I, I do think that uh, you know a significant improvement in how mental health is delivered um, um, would certainly benefit uh, uh, you know our city. Um, certainly, the number of calls that our police department responds to a lot of that is chronic mental illness. Um, so you know, I, I'm not asking for any amendment or anything tonight, but just moving forward, perhaps we consider how we um, um, formalize a, a position on mental health uh, to support our. Um, um, friends and partners at the county and in the state. So that's that's all. It looks great otherwise. Uh, so good work, Mallory. Thank you, Alderman Gordon. Um, Alderman Matson. Thank you, Alderman Tompkins. I'll certainly second everything Alderman Gordon said. And then, um, as we have done in the past, and and I know as uh, Ms. Spiegel and the mayor, you guys have said many times, we'll do again to support our school district and and our push for uh, equal funding for all our children uh, in our school district. I, it, it might not be a specific thing on this particular item, but I know you have plans for us to uh, weigh in again and and push and and so I'll uh, ask for that continued support uh, with uh, supporting the equal funding for our school children. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman Grip. Just wanted to uh, thank our administrative team. Uh, we have, in, in both years that I've been here, we are getting better each year 
at uh, building relationships at the state level, being active at the state level. And uh, I know next year will be better than we are this year, uh, but it's important that we have good relationships with the state. It's uh, important that we're at the table uh, advocating for what the city of Davenport needs and that we have a unified message that the staff can take to the state, but also uh, from the policy side that we can talk with uh, the folks in the state legislature to make sure that uh, we have a unified message and, and Davenport is at the table. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Clips. Yeah, just very quickly, um, you opened that door and I just had to walk through. But um, no, uh, but <laughs> no, but I think that was a good example. The school funding is one of those issues and the mental health is another. And there's I think we have to understand and our citizens need to understand there's certain things that are under our purview. Mental health is not actually one of those. It's a county function. And obviously our relating to the the school funding is a school function, but they are integral to our city. So we will do resolutions showing support, and I would suggest that we entertain a similar one on mental health with that activity as well. So those are two great suggestions. We can move that forward. And we've been working with the staff. Um, I know I'm committed and been working on relationship with all of our delegation in Des Moines, and I think it's important that we all really work hard on doing that as well. So thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else, this item will move forward. Um, number two is a resolution approving the City of Davenport to participate in the statewide consortium of the University of Iowa and U.S. Bank Purchasing Card Program. Uh, this just provides an opportunity for staff to make uh, smaller purchases in a much more efficient manner. So it's very exciting for us to move forward with this. Um, anyone from the public have any comments about this? Anyone from Council? This item will move forward. Number three is a resolution awarding a contract for the specific and aggregate stop loss insurance to HM Insurance Group. Anyone from the public? Anyone from Council? This item will move forward. Number four is a resolution awarding the contract for the City Hall Elevator Improvement Project to Precision Builders Incorporated of LeClaire, Iowa, in the amount of $314,712. Anyone from the public? Anyone from Council? All of those issues with the uh, elevator will soon be gone here. Stay tuned. Well, <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Number five, a motion approving the purchase of mobile wireless connectivity equipment from a State of Iowa master agreement from Caltech Incorporated of Baxter, Iowa, in the amount of $70,991.44. Um, this item is to help finish up the body camera program for the police department. Um, anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Anyone from Council? Seeing none, this item moves forward. Um, with that, I recommend to move all items to the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Oh, second, sorry, thank you. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. All opposed? All of these items will move forward, thank you. Um, last, there are eight purchases listed below. We won't read through those. Um, they're just a list for information purpose purposes only. Um, and that is the end of finance. Turn it back to the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Tompkins. I just want to amend again for everybody since we've gone through all of these items one at a time for feedback from the community. When our my colleagues say this will move on, meaning next week it's on the consent agenda. We don't go through individually. We'll approve all of them in a group. Any items that left any discussion, they'll be discussed again, and that was noted as part of the presentations. Um, are there any are there any other ordinances, resolutions, or motions this evening? Uh, seeing none, is there any public with business tonight? Ron Swinner, two three six six West Forty Seven. Listening in the news, the wow factor for our new riverfront development. I got news for you folks. Go down there and look. We're the wow factory of the country. Wonderful views, beautiful. But remember, whatever you do down there, you build it, it will flood. When it floods, we have to pay to clean it up. And that's something I'd like to see the cost as you bring this program forward, what it's going to take the city to clean up after a flood. You know, that's something we need to consider. You know, we have a ballpark that's expanding into part of the riverfront with its merry-go-round and rides, which is fine. 
but we can't destroy what's there, the natural beauty that we're so blessed with as a community. We have a bridge to nowhere. If you look it up on Google, that's what pops up. Why don't we take something with that and make it river perch, you know? We, we talk about making spaces for food trucks and other stuff, you know? We got Mick, brick and mortar people downtown that spend their hard earned money, you know, pay taxes, rent property. If we do do something like that, it needs to be rented to these food trucks, not just give it to them. You know, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's put electric in there so we don't have generators running and other stuff. But let's do this very carefully and tastefully. Because what we have, once you put something in there, it's destroyed. You, you know, we, we had a riverboat for many years down there, you know. We ended up with a barge for, what, almost a year? The ugliest thing you ever saw in the world, you know, sitting alone. But we have something here, a natural beauty that we're the envy. Uh, the mayor goes to conferences, you know, different parts of the country because what we have here, we need to preserve what we have and be very, very careful and vigilant, you know. We have two parks we want to put down there if we expand the parks a little more, but we need to keep the area by the band shelter open. Yes, we need to make it friendly, but one thing, amenities are not what brings the people in. It's the natural beauty. We have skate parks, we have squirt parks, we have ice rink. That's great stuff, but natural beauty is going to bring them in, and public safety also. This council has been over backwards this last year, and I am very, very thankful. This department has gone from this level to this level because of our chief and all the officers on this department. Their efficiency in my book has doubled over the past few years. But we need to focus more on public safety, what we can do to bring people in amenities and what you do down there are not just what's going to bring them in, but knowing they're safe, knowing that we have the most beautiful riverfront is going to bring them in even better. So as this council moves forward in discussing and planning and looking at these different things, we must do one thing and one thing only. Remember, what you put in must not destroy the natural beauty that's there. Go take a walk down there on a nice, cool winter morning or a summer breeze, a concert, you know. We, we've had to go in and redo after floods because of events coming in. That costs money. And every time you improve something, we have to have staff to maintain that. But if we keep it simple, but we keep it eloquent, we have something very special and I want to preserve that. And as you move forward, please keep that in mind and please keep in mind, I know you have programs coming up for the police department, things that are in the works, but you know what? It's not enough. We got to give our officers the tools, the equipment, whatever they need. This is our town. This is our city. And we'd like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the public would like to speak? I'm McWilliams, uh, Fifth Ward. Um, just wanted to let you guys know about a um, Special Olympics fundraiser. It is called Special Olympics Scott County Night with the uh, Quad City Mallards. Um, we're partnering with them to uh, help raise money. Um, for special events, and one of those events would happen to be the Winter Olympics, which is January 8th through the 10th, and I'm uh, participating in snowshoeing, and I've been busy training, and I have a couple more trainings to do before uh, January 1st, so I just wanted to let you guys know. Thank Great. you. Good luck. Keep up the good work. Anyone else from the public?
Richard Dracker, Fourth Ward, and I'm probably too late to change anybody's mind, but I sure hope you don't change Fourth and Third to two-way traffic. You're making a big mistake if you do. I was just driving Third Street this afternoon, a beer truck in one lane, so it's not a four lane anymore, it's shorter. Once you make it a two-way, you get that beer truck out there, and you don't have the traffic flow. You're going to have more accidents because you got more intersection control. You're going to have some pedestrian hit, stuff like that. It's a very poor plan. Now, I don't have an engineering degree, but I know if you want 25 miles an hour, you time the light. You go 26, you're going to stop at a red light. You go 23 to 25, you can drive east to west all the way across town or west to east all the way across town. You get 25 miles an hour. You don't need to put stop and go lights both directions. And even the Times said the million and a half was a very conservative underestimate on the cost of doing it. So, like I said, we the taxpayers are not your personal mint. And you have to really think twice when you spend our money. Changing these lights is just a very poor idea. If you want people, to, I mean, I come down, like from Bettendorf, I drive all the way across town without stopping. I come from my house, which I live up by the fairgrounds, going out to Bettendorf, I drive all the way across town without stopping. I'm not wasting gas, I'm not hitting my brakes, I'm driving the posted speed limit. Post the speed limit at 25, make it possible to drive 23 to 25 miles an hour, and you can drive east to west without stopping and west to east without stopping. You get your 25 miles an hour. And you don't end up putting more lights and more traffic problems and more accidents. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing no one else, are there any other reports of city officials? Seeing none, uh, we're going to move, will an alderman move to adjourn to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing litigation? It's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. <coughs> Gordon? Yes. Cool? Yes. Rawson? McGinnis? Yes. Tompkins? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Ambrose? Yes. Matson? Yes. Dickman? Yes. Grip? Yes. Nine yeses, Your Honor. Thank you very much. The council will now meet for executive session and adjourn from the second floor large conference room, which means we'll not return to the council chambers this evening. Thank you all very much for coming. <laughs>